<laughs> I have actually got a backup that I've just loaded up. So just in case something happens, I, I can oh. do that. So sorry, everyone, but we're there now and I'm really looking forward to this. So let's, let's go for it. Okay. okay. Can I start? Yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much for giving me the floor. My name is Atukunda Francois, working for the Alliance of Bioinvestment Set in Burundi office, and I'm mainly uh, involved in, in gender and crop, cropping systems. Today, I'm going to talk about understanding gender role and practice in banana crop and disease management in Burundi. When Leandra asked me to, to do this presentation, she was referring to my paper that was out in 2019. That was about understanding the gender role in, in, in banana crop, crop disease management, focusing on BXW. BXW is a banana example mass wilt. But when I was preparing my presentation, I thought that maybe it would be good to, to also combine two, two case study. One, the one to, is the one I'm talking about, and also there's a recent one that that we're looking at how banana crop management is managed in the context of male out migration. What happened to the banana when 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 the husband are away, who are, who are supposed to be the gatekeeper of of the banana? So before giving giving to, uh, could you move to the next slide? Uh, next slide, please. I have moved to the next slide. Can you see it? Oh, now, now, now it's fine. Yes. Okay. I'm going to talk about the state of banana and banana disease in Burundi, just give a, uh, giving you an overview on the banana state in Burundi. I will be talking about the research gaps, mainly the gender research gaps. And also I will be talking about key findings from the, the, the two studies I was talking about, and I will end up with some co concluding remarks and recommendation. recommendation. Next slide. Seems too slow. Yeah, yeah I'm so sorry, Francis. Oh, no, that's no okay. Problem. That's no okay. problem at all. No problem. France, it, it's fine. Okay. Francois, mm -hmm. I was just gonna say it will may it may just take a little bit. So if you just give a give it a couple of seconds each time, I, I think it'll get okay. there. No problem. No problem at all. So oh, banana is, is the most important crop in Burundi that is grown by almost 90% of the total population according to the data we accept from Exab in 2012. Of course, it's all data, but um, also Burundi is another best country that could have really updated data. It represents, it represents 62% of the total agricultural production at least in some area where in this Kirundo province where this study was carried out. And also it's known as the main cash and food crop in Burundi, which is used in different uh, ways to cover the household expenses, including school fees, healthcare, and also it is uh, the main source of, of food consumed in different ways as, as roasted, as cooked. And also it has important role in social status in family gift exchange, for example, in the wedding where different family could give like Eda, Pia, banana or bunch of banana as a gift to, I mean, to keep strengthening the social relationship. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, yes. At the same time, the banana is threatened by a number of diseases, both viral, fungal, bacteria, bacteria and pest disease and pest. And that is really chicken to crop productivity and also uh, make danger to the livelihood for the Burundi population. Among the most devastating diseases, there is this big W banana example, wilt. This is a bacteria disease that could cause up to 100% of yield loss. And also, in that case, could affect people's livelihood and also threaten the nutrition security of the people. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the big W in detail because this is more technical, but uh, on the left, on the right, picture you may see different symptoms or big W that could recognize, help to recognize the big W disease. But I'm not going to talk too much about those diseases because this is more technical. That would be, for the sake of time, that could not be the focus of this presentation. Next slide. 
Next slide. Okay. Despite the importance of the banana in the livelihood of small holders, uh, little is known about the socioeconomic, the socioeconomic context in which the banana is produced. And also we need to understand the gender roles and norms that embed into banana production. And also how those norms and gender, how those gender roles and norms could participate in innovation process and uptake of, of, of innovative technology that, that are developed. In, it's in that context that those two studies have been contacted to be able to respond to um, those research questions. Next slide. Okay. On this, the two studies have drawn up on meat method approaches that try to use different data collection um, tools and also data, data collection instrument and also that different data, data analyze methods. Among them, this is the, the result we obtained using the forces approach. From this approach, we try to, to ask a respondent to raise crops based on the the income that are generated from it and also to, depends on the households that are growing to the crops. Based on this exercise, we, we did the next exercise that was meant to ask the respondent to map different, cro different crops according to how many men are involved in it and how many men are involved in it. As a result, it turned out that most of cut crops are associated with men and uh, and other food crops are associated with women. And it sent out also from this, this uh, of course, this is, I, I, I'm not sure you can, see it, you can see it properly from the screen, but if you could realize from the second, uh, second, picture, on, uh, second picture on chart B, you may see how bananas stand out as the most important crop grown by men. And from this, banana is meant to be um, men's crop. Next slide, please. As I said earlier, you may see that the gender differences crop in Burundi, well, uh, banana is the most income generating crop that is meant to be grown by men and also the food crop that are often intercropped on the same plot. The, as you may see from the picture on the right, you may see that the man is harvesting banana, but this banana is also intercropped with the, with, with the beans that are mainly managed by women. This crop distinction sometimes creates tension between men and women because women accuse men to walk over their beans when carrying out banana activities, but also men accuse women to damage the root of banana when women are carrying out the, the bean activities. And that may impact, of, of course, on the effectiveness of, of this management option. Uh, depend, uh, you know, when in the same household, when one is seeing that it's involved in such crop, another one is involved in, in such crop, and then they could, be, they, they could create some tension and conflict between the households. Next. We try also to see the, the difference in banana productivity between female, house, female headed households and male households. And across the, this is what the household survey we conducted recently in 2020. And from the result from this, um, from this, from this household survey, we find that using T-square test showed the significant differences in total banana production and in banana production factor, including land and, and level and the use of fertilizer. But you may see that in uh, those differences are in favor of men where women have larger production banana productivity when men had household have a larger banana productivity, but also it, it may not be surprising to see also that the difference is coming from the uh, different banana production factor 
uh, land and the labor that always still challenge for women headed the household. This um, this is that I mean this is that is to inform that I'm trying to give an overview on the overall banana productivity system in Burundi to be able to understand um how this uh, the, the, this the, the difference between men and women in banana production. We find out that among the factors that causing these differences, including the discriminatory norms and negative stereotypes that still undermine women's involvement in banana in banana productivity. Women feel excluded by prevailing social norms that mar marginalize women taking over tasks that are reserved for men, particularly when men are, are, are at home. This is, uh, this is an, an example of quote that coming from an individual women interview when a woman said, I grew up seeing my father planting the banana, but I have never seen my mother planting banana. So I said myself that a woman couldn't plant banana. You know, this is a kind of norm that existing that, I mean, women grew up seeing that banana is associated with men and then they could not be involved in that. But also we find out from the views of male respondents that there are some negative stereotypes that are sometimes that are unconscious. That could be the most existing gender in the banana farming system. For instance, from this quote from a man, he said, when there is no food, it's a, it's a man who suffers to search for money to buy food, of course, while women are paying with their kids at home. This, you know, this highlighted in, in red, you may see that how um, men undervalue or underestimate the time of women involved, I mean, by take, by, by, this uh, the caring work of women is not really account as as contributed to the household overall uh, well being. When I mean women say that is staying at home playing with kids, this this how those kind of stereotypes could undermine also the the women to be fully involved in in, in banana cropping system, and also in the all those differences are related to the. The, the headship of the household. You may see that the Burundian says in Hokoka Zidivika is that to be translated as a hen could not sing when a rot is, is there. That means women uh, referred as hen and men referred as roster, that women could not speak up when, when, when men is at home. Or simply means that women could not take decision when his husband is at home. All those are kind of norms and the stereotype that could also keep reinforcing the gender differences. I mean, the, the gender inequality is embedded into banana cropping system and the agriculture cropping system as a whole. Could you move to the next slide? Also, we find out there is inequal among the drivers of those inequalities. There is inequal access to knowledge and information between men and women. You may find that in banana, banana business and uh, banana and business management tasks are mainly often carried out by men, and therefore men are rarely uh, targeted as recipients, recipient, recipient of training and information. You may know, you, you may understand that in these circumstances. Method training that are targeting um, banana farmers are mainly women, men that are attending to those training and women are, are not really well involved. Women may only be able to attend to meeting on training when their husbands are away, for instance, in the context of male migration or when men decide not to attend. This is only such circumstances that women could, be, could attend or could get involved into uh, banana training. Women's mobility also, when compared to men, is limited because of their simple role or their double role of caring and also productive and reproductive and productive tasks that women are assigned to. Next slide. Then what happened in the context of male automation? 
Then it's shift of gender role, as you, as you are going to see from the, I mean, from the evidence from the next study that show that women, that the narrative that challenge, I mean, the narrative that uh, men is, but, uh, banana is a men's group, that is challenging this context of male out migration. From this uh, result from the household survey, we try to understand the willingness or the interest to invest in banana cropping activities according to response matter study. You know that we, we, we draw this result upon different group of, of respondents, including men living with their husband, men living with, with their, their wives on the farm, and also women, the facto head of household that are mainly uh, uh, that are mainly the, the, the that are mainly the the widows, and also we try to invest it, uh, to invest it among wives of migrants and women living with their husband as well. But what is stand out from this this research or this survey? It shows that women living with their, their husband are less willing to invest in banana. As you may see, that only forty eight percent among the women living with their husband are willing to invest in banana. While other categories of women have as much as, in, as much as interest to invest in banana as men. You may see that all of them, above 70% are willing to invest in banana. Next slide. Based on that, we try to investigate the perceived power and the freedom to decide of a banana among different categories of respondents using the rate of power and freedom tools. What is stand out from this exercise? You may see that wives of migrants, if you are looking here, you try to interview and separately wives of migrants and migrants to understand how really they perceive their level of decision-making power. When, and it turned out that wives of migrants feel to have all the power and the freedom to decide on banana when they husband that way. And uh, could you move to, I mean, like click to see the highlights, there are some highlights that maybe could be. Uh, uh -huh. As you may see, when husbands are away, women have really power to decide over banana. But when husbands are at home, women have the lower level to decide of, on banana. Uh, similarly, on the other side, if you could see the next chart, the perceived power of men. Women feel to have the power when they are to home, but when they are away in the context of out immigration, also they feel that the level of power to make decisions of banana cropping activities, including the disease management, reduces as well. This shows how, I mean, women um, are feeling empowered or are feel to have power over banana because they are getting in, they are getting in, 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 in compromise and then they have started to invest I mean or to 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 do to be involved in banana cropping activities and um uh, in banana management as a whole. Move to the next slide. We did the same exercise by comparing the same category, different category of respondents to be able to see this. The first one compare only migrants and, and the wives of migrants. But in this chart, we try to, to show to the different categories of, of, of women, including widows, with, with, including wives of migrants, including men who are living with their, 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 with their, their wives and women living with their husband to see how really they feel their decision-making power. What you may see, maybe you could click again to show the highlights. I mean, yeah. You may see that the position for wife of migrant is higher if you compare with the position for women living with their husband in terms of decision-making power, decision-making power of a banana. But at the same time, you may see that the position of migrants is lower if you compare with the position of men living with their wives at home. That means uh, exactly this also highlights how uh, women feel empowered when they are. They, I mean, they, they are when they are having this uh, high level of decision making power over banana. 
In the other side, if you are looking for the red, I mean the red, the red chart, you may see that the position why uh, we try to compare different generation from current mother to the current daughter to current, I mean to the position of 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 father of mother generation, and also compare the father generation to uh, current husband generation. What we may see is that the position of current current wives. It's higher if you compare with the position of the mother's generation. That means there has been a shift, maybe in due to, in due to that out migration, there has been a shift in interest on decision making power uh, over banana ads, I mean, across different generations. This was to compare different generations, and, and uh, the results are the same with men as well. Well, of course, they're not the same because men, current men, feel the position to be lower if you compare with the position of, of father's generation. Yeah, I have already. That was this is what I was talking about. So I think I will I will finish that con conclusion. In Mark had told banana is perceived as men's crop. We because the women have a less motivation to get involved in banana activities and associate disease, and because also the access to agriculture in input and access to knowledge are in core between men and women. However, in the context of out migration, we realize that there are shifting laws and practices in the absence of male in the households, and also that demonstrate that women become the primary decision maker and has as much as interest in banana if, to invest in banana as men. And also women are able to break the norms and get involved into a domain domain. They are able to call out activities that previously were not preventing, I mean, was not really allowed to, to, to call out. And based on that, next slide. Based on that, we realized that since this Able, it has been proven possible to get women involved into banana. We are arguing that gender transformative approach, engaging both, and women, both men and women, are able to alleviate or are able to overcome the gender normative constraints that prevent women and men, I mean, that prevent women to get involved into banana. So, and uh, this is recommendation that comes from this research and I think this is the end of my presentation. Of course I was rushing because of the sake of time. Thank you very much for 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 listening to me and I'll be happy to share more insights during the QA session. Thank you. Thank you so much Francois for that wonderful presentation. I'm really sorry um Francois and everybody else because it has sort of taken a bit of time for um, yeah, for the slides to load. Um, so we've got a few questions that have come in. Um, so from Tan, I see the number of women or wives participating in the survey is much lower than men. Is it a challenge to interview a woman or is it difficult to get a woman to fill in a survey? Uh my presentation draws up on two different study. From the first, from the first step, from the first study, the sample was, was based on people who have been participating in the in the what we call the farmer learning rules, and that was based on people registering or household registering as 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 banana farmers. Given that mainly. Uh, Men are representing the household. They are the most really that were represented in, in, in in that project. And that's for that part, first part, men were larger as women, were, were more larger than women. But in the second study, when we did intentionally sampled the equal number of men and women to be able to get equal views from both men and women, this was different. This, I mean, from the first study, the sample was based on people who have been involved in the project, and they are mainly men, and the women were very, very lower because they are only from the household that are, are headed by women. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, that is, of course, as I say, this is drawn up for the two different studies and also the sampling strategy was, was different from the two studies. Thank you so 